Thank you very much for uh, joining uh, us in this uh, webinar. Uh, really appreciate your participation and your time to join us. Uh, this is this is going to be a good value for you guys, the investment that you do in your time uh, discussing the subject. I can assure you that these are the topics that are not normally discussed in uh, many petroleum engineering courses. That I know that for sure. And uh, But in the industry, they are used, especially in certain areas, in uh, certain... Uh, 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 certain zones uh, for drilling, and I was, you know, lucky to have an opportunity to work, uh, uh, you know, in this area in my previous career. So I thought that we would we share our uh, experience here through this, uh, uh, you know, presentation. Uh, this this uh, basically deals with the use of air foam aerated drilling, uh, aerated mud system, and how we can use lightweight fluid. So uh, let's, uh, you know, get started with the presentation. So why use lightweight fluid? This is the question that we are trying to answer here today. Uh, so, uh, you, uh, see, there are uh, basically the objective is to uh, you know drill non-reservoir formations in underbalanced mode with the intention to uh, solve loss circulation problems and drill faster uh, through uh, hard rock formations. So, uh, let me uh, you know uh, take the second point first. Uh, in many cases, you experience hard rock formations at surface, and there is not enough weight on it available to uh, get the required ROP. This uh, this surface hard rock formations uh, can become very nasty and tough, and you may end up spending a lot of time drilling through using conventional bits and conventional drilling systems. So uh, we need to use uh, this lightweight fluid in order to gain higher ROP and use a different method to drill through this. And uh, in intermediate section surface or intermediate section, uh, you may experience loss circulation, and the normal drilling fluid may not be uh, uh, you know good to drill through. So you need to use a different technique, and this is something that is being used uh, everywhere uh, in the world, especially in North America, in uh, Middle East. So something that you, you may consider for your application as well. So this is your typical, uh, this cartoon just shows basically in which areas you can use uh, air drilling uh, or lightweight fluid drilling. Uh, basically, you can use it uh, in surface and intermediate sections, and uh, but not reservoir sections. So in reservoir sections, you have to use underbalanced drilling, uh, and the focus is to prevent uh, reservoir damage. In, for UBD, the focus is to prevent reservoir damage and increase uh, productivity of a well. But for air drilling, the focus is on uh, preventing mud losses and to get uh, increase the ROP. Uh, the, the idea of not use, uh, using air uh, in reservoir uh, or intermediate section and surface section is to ensure that uh, you are drilling non hydrocarbon bearing formation. Air being, uh, uh, air has oxygen and oxygen is combustible. So in order to avoid uh, any uh, kind of possibility of downhole fires, the most important condition or the criteria is to use this type of uh, drilling methodology only in non reservoir sections. If you have any, any possibility of having any, any uh, hydrocarbons in the zone, then you need to go to uh, nitrified fluid and not air, air. So in hard rock, uh, if hard rock is encountered at surface, usually not enough weight on which is available. As a result, you don't get enough ROP, that is rate of penetration. And uh, therefore, you end up uh, drilling this uh, excessively. So we have seen this in India, uh, where uh, basically uh, ONGC was drilling a well, and uh, this solution was provided to them, and it really helped them in some areas uh, in onshore uh, surface section drilling. So number of bits were consumed uh, to drill the surface sections. They ended up consuming some uh, a huge amount of bits, like 40, 45 bits to drill this one section. When we saw the uh, request, the requirement, we were just we, we just gave them the solution, and it was was very you know, useful. And then because each time you have to uh, change a bit, you need to trip out a hole. So that takes a lot of time, uh, basically, to to trip out a hole and to again go back in with a new bit. You not only spend money on the bit, but you also spend a rig time to come out a hole and then go back in with a new bit. And uh, the deviation problem due to high weight on bit. So, what you have here is, uh, you, if you apply uh, excessive weight on bit, you can you end up accidentally deviating the well. So this is another issue. So uh, basically, there are two main criteria here as we were discussing. One is to eliminate the loss circulation issues and increase uh, ROP and bit performance. So these are the uh, and if if you are uh, basically in a, a productive zone, uh, you you protect your reservoir to use the production. That, that is that is in that case we, you need to use nitrogen and not air for drilling. Basically, but the overall objective is to save cost of drilling. Non-productive time, basically, when we talk about non-productive time, that is NPT drilling related non-productive time, it is including the following things. You know, now what happens when you encounter loss circulation? So when you encounter loss circulation, you have to use loss circulation material, and a lot of times we do this uh, while drilling. That when we start in, uh, in encountering losses, we pump loss circulation material. Now here is a cost associated with using loss circulation material. Then if your losses are not cured. You need to set a cement plug. Uh, this is complete non-productive time, and we have seen this uh, all the time. That when you when you have to set a cement plug, you need to get the cementing company. Most of the time, these are all contingency emergency services, so you end up paying a lot of amount to the uh, cementing company to design the plug, and then they come come uh, you know 
and the, 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 they said this plug, right? you're waiting on cement for 12 hours uh, plus the operational time. So you end up spending 24, 36 hours just uh, for this operation. And this is completely non-productive time. Uh, and then, then again, if, if you're going to use new mud uh, uh, for uh, replacing the lost mud, then you need a lot of water. If it is a water-based mud, normally surface and intermediate sections that you are referring to is water-based mud. So you consume a lot of water uh, to prepare this mud. Uh, and that is also additional cost. And associated costs of transporting uh, uh, water and water wells and all that, these are all indirect costs that, are, that get uh, associated with the drilling. And we end up uh, consuming a lot of uh, materials like this. Uh, and therefore, uh, these are some of the issues associated with loss circulation. So how air drilling can help? Now, another issue that we have seen uh, when we have a low uh, pressure formation and you're having excessive uh, pressure in the well is a, a phenomenon called differential sticking. So no, normally what happens is if you have a, your pipe gets stuck against the wall of the well and you need, uh, and then if that happens, you need to free the pipe using a, basically apply by applying over pull. And uh, this is another non-productive time that we are talking about here. Uh, the non-productive time associated with stuck pipe. Now, if you are not able to free the pipe, then you need to go for fishing operation. That is to try to fish the pipe out of well. And then if that is also not possible, you need to set a cement plug above your fish and then sidetrack the well. So in uh, low per in, in uh, low pressure formations, this is, uh, where you are using uh, excessive overbalance, this differential, st differential sticking can happen in a particular area. And the cost associated with uh, this particular uh, non-productive activity is significantly high. And uh, loss circulation, as we just discussed, is, uh, is uh, a very common problem. And air drilling, basically what it does is it uses a lightweight fluid so that mud column and the pressure does not exceed the formation pressure. So when we know a particular, uh, basically, formation having very low pressure uh, because of any reason, either depletion or because of any, any kind of uh, fractures that the formation has, then we can accordingly plan the mud system to have a, to have a pressure that is lower than your, that is, that is, that is just basically, uh, you know, above your pore pressure, but it, you, you can even be under balance, you know. So you can plan your, uh, with this technique, you can plan your pressure in the well that is, uh, you know, even lower than your pore pressure. And that way you can uh, reduce uh, the issue of uh, loss circulation. And how does it increase the, how does, so we, we discussed about rate of penetration a little while ago. So let, let us see how it increases your uh, penetration rate. So light, lightweight fluids uh, basically reduce the overburden pressure over the rock face, making the rock to break easily and uh, basically increase your rate of penetration. If this has been seen and you would see numerous case studies uh, and technical papers written by uh, various authors. Uh, they have uh, done a lot of experiments on this that by reducing the uh, drilling fluid density, you can achieve a uh, higher ROP. Now, uh, we all know that uh, drilling fluid density is always designed to prevent any inflect from the well bore. So here we are talking about uh, drilling through a section, drilling through areas which are basically non-hydrocarbon bearing. So here, uh, plus we have surface equipment such as the use of rotating control device and we will see that in our uh, coming slides. We do have a lot of uh, production at surface to ensure that we do not get any influx from the formation. So improved. So if you have a higher ROP, you, you also have a, you know the basically an ability to uh, remove the drill cuttings faster. And uh, you will see that with this technique, you can get as much as ten times higher ROP. And we'll we will see the in some case studies uh, how much of ROP was incrementally achieved. So what are the limitations of this? So now all of this appears uh, to be very good. You know, I mean, it's, this seems to be a solution for everything. So why not use it everywhere? And why not why not we are doing it every on every well and every, every location? So why? Because the air drilling essentially is underbalanced drilling. So you really need to have a very hard formation, a formation with a lot of strength in order to ensure that it doesn't collapse. Now, formations that are unconsolidated or poorly consolidated, we cannot use this technique. Uh, so it needs to it requires some kind of uh, initial engineering evaluation to ensure that uh, the formations are uh, basically having uh, enough strength to uh, be penetrated and balanced. The other thing that you want to ensure that uh, there are no reactive or uh, geopressured shale. So there are, if there are some uh, formations that require uh, mud to maintain wellbore integrity, such as uh, the one mentioned in point number two, that is reactive shale or geopressured formations. So those are the areas where you cannot use air drilling technique uh, or aerated mud technique or underbalanced drilling technique because those formations will start to collapse. Again, clay stones are some formations where you cannot use. You also cannot use air drilling where you have some salt formations. So there is, there is a limitation and before you use this technique, technique you need to do some engineering evaluation. And uh, engineering evaluation and a, a feasibility study will give you an idea uh, that whether this technique would be suitable. Appears to be a good one for, uh, for your area, for your type of formation. Now whether can we do it or can we not is something uh, basically that you need to do with either your service provider or, service, uh, or uh, any third party engineering company. And that would be the best thing to do.
before you actually go for it. So, but in in a lot of cases where there are regular, uh, I have seen where once they have established uh, this methodology, uh, then they have used it on a number of wells and they have got incremental benefits. As a matter of fact, in Yemen, in Abu Dhabi, in uh, in uh, Oman, in uh, Saudi Arabia, on a large number of wells, this is being used, and then they manage. They have been able to drill the surface and intermediate sections in a matter of few days. So by so by increasing your drilling rate, you can significantly reduce the cost of drilling a well. Now, when you reduce the cost of uh, cost, your uh, your profitability of the well increases. If you spend too much time in drilling, uh, which is what we uh, typically do in other areas, then uh, then your uh, cost of well construction increases significantly. So this is this is uh, one of the things that you have to take into account. So so if you are involved in planning a well drilling activity, or if you are involved in research, or if you are involved in any areas, I would say that you should seriously consider. Uh, evaluating this technique for your wells, you know, uh, to see if it can be used. And then you should approach some of the service providers, have a serious discussion with them, provide them with some data that you have, uh, and then let them uh, assess and give you some kind of a, uh, feedback on whether it can be used or not used. So there are some other limitations that are written down here. So what happens is if you are not sure about a particular section having hydrocarbons, then you should not use it because then it can lead to downward fires. If you have water flow zones, they can also create problem. If uh, if you have C uh, MWD, LWD is another issue where you need you need mud pulse telemetry. So if you have air in your uh, mud, or if you just have air in drilling as a drilling uh, fluid, then uh, directional uh, sorry a measurement while drilling and locking while drilling is not feasible because uh, as you all know, uh, it uses mud pulse telemetry to transmit data to surface. And if you have air or aerated mud, then um, uh, the conventional mud pulse telemetry is not possible. You may have to use electromagnetic MWD. So there is an option available for you. Uh, uh, an alternative available for you. So that also needs to be examined. One of the issues with uh, using air and why uh, air is uh, sometimes uh, not permissible is in case of any hydrocarbons present in your well uh, uh, from a particular zone, then it can uh, possibly lead to downward fires. Air uh, being combustible gas, uh, if it comes in contact with hydrocarbons right, with a certain percentage, then it can cause uh, downward fires. So this is the biggest risk associated with this uh, technique and it needs to be assessed thoroughly before uh, we, we can um, Utilize this method. Uh, now, the other other problem here is that you can air is also corrosive. See, nitrogen. If you use nitrogen, nitrogen uh, is inert gas and it is less corrosive. Whereas air is air can cause corrosion. So air can cause corrosion in your drilling equipment, in your drill pipe, in your DHA compared to the regular mud. So you need to use corrosion inhibitors, basically to uh, prevent corrosion. So the, there are solutions available, and uh, the the method and the technique is quite established. There is solutions to all the things. Uh, all, the, uh, all the all the challenges that we have associated with uh, this method. One of the other problems that happens uh, while using air drilling is the erosion, uh, erosion of the formation. And so you can have a, you may possibly, if, if the formation is not hard, you may have a over gauged hole, and then that can lead to several other problems while uh, running casing, while cementing, while, uh, you know, the basically uh, waiting on cement and those type of things. So you may end up using more cement. So uh, when you talk about the lightweight fluids, there are four main variants in this. The four main variants are air drilling, this is also called as dust drilling, then you have mist drilling, then you have foam drilling, and then you have aerated fluid. Let's examine all this uh, one by one. So what is air drilling? Air drilling, in air drilling, just big volumes of dry air is used to replace the mud system. So you just use air drilling, that's it, you just use air drill. And this may sound uh, a little uh, unusual for those who, have, who may not have been in operation, but I have been there and it is just called as dust drilling. Why is it called as dust drilling? Because the formation cuttings that you're drilling, it comes out in the form of dust. You are actually and uh, the entire, uh, basically, you're just blowing dust out of the well. So that's why it is called as dust drilling. Now, what is this mist drilling? What happens is when small quantities uh, of water is produced by the formation while you're drilling, then a small quantity of water is added along with foaming agent to the air uh, to mitigate the produced water, to, to ensure that the produced water is lifted. So uh, foaming agent and small water is added to the air while drilling. When you start to see that the water is, uh, the formations have started to produce water. Now you are drilling under balance, and if you pass through any water producing zones, then you would notice that there is uh, <clears throat> that that need, water needs to be also displaced out of the well, and it is done by adding some foaming agent and water to your air. This technique is called as mist drilling. So most of the time, when you go to any well site uh, for air drilling, you would go with all the required uh, combination of uh, options available. Like for example, you may have to switch to mist drilling while you are drilling because you see that water is produced. So. So you would you would basically uh, take this uh, 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 mist drilling as the option. The next uh, technique that here that is part of this uh, group is foam drilling. Now 
Foam is used as a circulating fluid and uh, basically uh, low volume of gas along with surfactant. Uh, surfactant is used in foam building. So foam can be extremely, foam, the advantage of using foam is that it has got high viscosity and has got excellent cold cleaning capacity. So you can, you, you can just add surfactant and there is some engineering calculations that need to be done to decide how much volume of surfactant you need to add. And some lab testing is also done, but a small, lab, a small test to see the consistency of the foam uh, and the quality of the foam and when the foam is generated in the well. So foam is used as part of circulating fluid. Uh, basically, uh, foam can give you very low density uh, and very high viscosity. So this is the characteristics of foam. And if foam is used, uh, it can give you excellent foam cleaning. And the last uh, last variant is aerated fluid. Now, what is aerated fluid? It is just basically a combination of liquid. That is your conventional mud and along with gas, normally air, a combination of the two. Now, air is mixed. Uh, basically, in aerated fluid, you have the entire circulating system as you have on your regular drilling operation. With the difference that uh, you have uh, you have uh, uh, air being added to the mud system in order to lighten the fluid. Uh, we will see that uh, set up, you know, in the coming slides. So essentially, these are the these are the four techniques that we just uh, you know discussed: air, mist, aerated liquid, and foam. Depending on your situation, depending on your conditions, one of the technique or combination of this will be used for your well. For example, air drilling may be used in a very surface section. Aerated mud will be used in uh, intermediate section. Well. But the overall goal is to achieve a uh, higher ROP and minimize loss circulation. So now here you see in this uh, basically diagram, uh, what kind of uh, densities you would get with a particular uh, method, a particular fluid that you use. So if you have uh, air or mist, you can get a density in pounds per gallon for as less as 2 to 4 ppg. If you have a uh, Aerated mud, you can get between 4 to 6.9 ppg. And if you are using oil, uh, that is a single phase fluid, you will get between 6.9 to 8.3. And if you are using water or gel water or saturated salt water, then you would get density between 8.3 to 10. So anywhere, if you want to go below 8.5 or 8.6 ppg drilling mud uh, density, you need to use one of these techniques that we just discussed. And uh, there are uh, calculations and engineering assessment that needs to be done before you, uh, uh, you know, decide the most suitable technique for you. So let's start discussing one by one. Let's say uh, dry air drilling. Now the first technique that we just discussed was dry air drilling. So usually what happens is hole is unloaded uh, from your conventional mud after you drill your cement and shoe. Once you drill your cement, once you drill your shoe track, then you unload the hole uh, you know, with the help of dry air. So the mud from the hole is replaced with your dry air. And uh, you will see these parameters. Usually your annular velocities are very high, 3000 feet per minute and uh, your hole is cleaned only with annular velocity. Now, you all might be wondering, how is hole clean? You know, we're talking about con conventional mud, which has got viscosity, which has got density. The viscosity is used to suspend the cuttings. And uh, this, uh, when, when you're not, uh, and then, uh, then how, how, what happens to hole cleaning? So hole cleaning, usually here, the, uh, the hole cleaning is done using annular velocity and not viscosity. So the velocities are so high and the particles are so small that with this high velocity of uh, air that is being injected into your drill pipe and into the annulus will basically clean the hole. So there is no viscous fluid in the well or having any kind of uh, properties for suspending cuttings. The as we discussed a little earlier, there uh, uh, the for dry air is highly erosive, so your formation needs to be very strong, and there is no bottoms up time. Unlike conventional drilling, where as you guys, some of you may be familiar that there is something called as bottoms up time. So there is a lag time depending on your circulation rate. You will uh, you will need to wait for some time before the sample from the bottom comes to surface, depending on your depth and your circulation rate. Now here, uh, there is no lag time or bottom up time. You just get the cuttings uh, at a very high rate to surface. If there are no there are no ECDs and cutting at surface are in the form of a dust. So you don't have rock cutting samples at surface, it's just dust. And your ROPs are excessively high. Your bit cooling is uh, bit cooling is enhanced. You have uh, you can experience vibration in your string. Uh, there is no filter cake or mud cake because there is no mud system used. We are just using air to drill. And there is another thing, uh, which is the use of air hammer. So this is another type of bit that is used. There is no conventional bit used. Sometimes you use a hammer bit uh, for drilling. We will see those bits now in this uh, in the subsequent slides. So as you see damp samples uh, coming to surface, meaning a little bit of water uh, associated with the samples, uh, you switch to mist drilling. Uh, you, <coughs> you basically start using mist drilling in order to mitigate the situation of water being entered in your sample. And uh, you add some water and uh, foaming agent which will help you clean that water from the well. And poor hole cleaning is an indication of an incremental air volume and the use of shock sub recommended not, not to be used when air hammer. So shock subs are used uh, basically to prevent shocks on your drill string. But if you are using air hammer, uh, then uh, that is what is not to be used. Some other recommendations are that 
basically, you need to frequently inspect your pipe for corrosion and erosion. Uh, regular TCI or milk tooth bit is adequate for this application. Use of mechanical jar is more advisable because of the vibrations. And the roller reamers are also prefer, uh, preferably to be used. Now here is a typical layout. You running your with your string, and then you have uh, to in order to get your air, uh, you know, in the system, you have your primary compressors, you have your booster compressors, you have your uh, choke where you can increase or decrease your air, uh, basically. And then your meter run, a meter run, and Barton chart recorder essentially records your flow rate of the air that you are pumping into the well. And you have your injection valve and uh, bypass valve. Manifold uh, basically to bypass the air. If you do not want to pump the air, then you bypass it. You know. uh, basically, this is another check valve uh, that is provided when you are before you connect to the rig stand by manifold. And uh, bleed off valve when you when you want to bleed the pressure before you have to before you you know at the time of main connection. And then uh, you have your rotating head here, which is right on top of your uh, BOP. <coughs> uh, you have your eight to ten inch blue line. Blue line is, is from where your returns come and they go to the waste pit. Yeah. And then you have an option to catch your sample here. Samples are basically test, but you still need to check the sample. This is where you come to know, at the sample catcher, you come to know whether you have some uh, water being produced or not, and then you went, whether you have to switch to waste drilling. And this is the disposal pulpit where all the waste goes. Uh, it needs to be far away, at least 45 minutes uh, from the wellhead. That is one of the regulations. So you need to keep in mind that you know, waste pit should be uh, not very close to your uh, wellhead. And typically, this is how it looks when you're dust drilling and, uh, or air drilling. Cuttings come in the form of this dust and they are blown towards the waste pit. Now here is this hammer bit that we were talking about a little while ago. This can be used uh, in place of your regular uh, TCI bit, you know, milk tooth bit or TCI bit. So this has a completely different mechanism. Uh, they provide very high ROPs while drilling and uh, they usually use the straight holes. So at very low speed, they provide very, uh, very high ROP because of percussion action. Uh, basically it, is, it, it doesn't rotate, it, it, it gives you hammering action. So here is how uh, the mechanism it basically is uh, for the bit. It, it operates on air, uh, certain uh, air pressure uh, and uh, flow rate uh, that needs to be circulated through it and 